Like I said tonight, my job is not to create controversy. This is a long teaching and um, I'm not here to begin to examine certain things but there are three of this that I want to address. Three of it. Hallelujah. Many of you think I'm going to talk about appearance. I will not talk about appearance. So if you are one, let me tell you, there are three things. Okay, let me just talk briefly about appearance. Three things. Living faith will never be deeper life. Christ's embassy will never be celestial church. Look up. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So let me announce once and for all on behalf of my glorious king and his government. Ladies in the... No, we will never reach a point where all the ladies in the world will stop wearing trousers. And we will never get to a point in the world where all the ladies in the world will wear trousers. Hello. I hope you like what I'm saying. We will never get to a point where guys will stop wearing jeans. And we will never get to the point where everybody in the whole world will wear suit. Listen friends, the secret to the growth of the corporate body is to concentrate on our similarities, not our differences. Hallelujah. So should I say something at least about appearance? Alright. Very quickly. We'll look at just one scripture. I didn't want to touch it. Hey, Holy Spirit, yeah, okay. You really want me to touch this? I will touch it if you can give me the popular scripture that says, let a woman not wear what belongs to a man. Who can give me? Calm down. Deuteronomy what? Alright, let's go there and see what the word of God has to say. Deuteronomy what? <laughs> oh Lord, I pray that your word will come with power. Set men free. Many believers are saved. Many are filled with the Holy Ghost, but very few are free. We hail you most high. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. This was Moses giving the law of brotherhood, as many translations put it. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Are you there? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Hmm. So that's the that's the that's the scripture that has brought all kinds of things and um, we've had several people confused about all of this I did a little study shocking study so follow me we're going to examine just three words and then we'll be out of that place hallelujah the word pertaineth in the Hebrew is the word keli, K-E-L-I-Y. -E and this is what it means in the Hebrew. We are examining that scripture. There are several believers that take scriptures out of context. That's why as much as possible, try to get a Bible concordance. Takes concordance. Or at least by amplified. Many of us, you have one torn Bible that fire burned half of it. That's why you chuck in your pocket and break. How will you grow that way? When they open to the scripture, you start, you don't see the first part of the verse you are looking for because fire has burnt it. And then you cram only half of it. Then you use it to build doctrines. Now, the word pertaineth in the Hebrew, this is what it means. It means, number one, an article. It means a vessel. It means an implement or an utensil. Isn't that amazing? That's what the word pertaineth means. Hallelujah. Very important. Now, the word man that is used in Deuteronomy 5 is not the word Adam. Interesting. I hope you know Adam means man from the dust of the earth. It's not the word Adam. It's the word, I don't know how to pronounce it, I-Y-S-H. 
you know what they call it that thing you put apostrophe right all right i y s h and this is what it means listen it means a soldier it means a warrior it means a man of war follow me are you listening to me it means a warrior a soldier a man of war men that go for war now you understand the context because at this point israel were always fighting hallelujah moses was given something very very powerful and so if this were to be arranged and put properly this is what it would be in the hebrew the woman shall not put on the weapons or the armor of a warrior neither shall a warrior put on a woman's garment for all that do it is an abomination unto the Lord. Women were not permitted to go for war. I hope you know that in Jewish customs. Women were not allowed. Relax. Women were not allowed to go for war. Listen. Trust me. You are smiling. I'm soon coming back to the other side. I... Praise God. So Moses was admonishing the people, preparing them. It was an abomination according to the principles of the Jewish custom. That's why women didn't go for war. Scriptural proof. That's why Bathsheba was back at home. Hallelujah. When the people went for war. And David violated the principle because kings followed the people to go for war. And he didn't go for the war. And so while he was meandering around his veranda he saw the woman women were not that's why till today in certain nations of the world women it's just necessity that has made women to join military are you listening to me it was not part of the jewish customs that's why the worst kind of warfare is that you kill men women and children women and children were exempted is believed that when you capture the men and when you fight how many of you remember when gideon was going to fight the midianites hallelujah the women and the children were made to go back and then all the men the men of war were the ones who went and so on and so forth so that's what he's talking about he really wasn't talking about a man adam as it were he was saying it's an abomination to put on the robe of war that when the men become so irresponsible to a point that the women have to wear an amorage and go for war it is an abomination unto the Lord hallelujah and so these things were taken and then we began to use them to teach all kinds of things and now that's where the concept of trouser came in the concept of this and that came in and several people have insulted the western world have had on many pulpits many africans and nigerians ungratefully insulting the western world let me tell you what our official dressing were rags animal skin so if we are going back that's where we are going our official dressing was not skirts; it was animal skin let me tell you the official jewish clothes were even skirts. jesus of nazareth your jesus of nazareth that you watch what was jesus wearing uh, hold on calm down listen as you are i told you i'm coming back because there are many of you that you're agreeing to what i'm saying it's not a an openness for truth it's just a way of endorsing your heart of rebellion we will still check it hallelujah and so many people have been misled and i know many books that have been written and many people have been said if you wear trousers you are going to hellfire others have been said if you wear skirts you are going to hellfire you are going to this you are going to that and sincerely look at me i'm not i'm not um if you know me i'm not a whether trouser or no trouser person that's that's really not me. the issue that the bible puts the central message is to christian character backed up by modesty and decency what the church should be addressing is modesty because in jewish days prostitutes didn't wear trousers they didn't even wear mini skirt but what they wore was transparent and there are many people who are like that they say say you say don't wear trousers okay oh, i will not wear trousers but what they are wearing can kill 
so have we solved the problem are you listening to me we have not solved the problem of of there are so many people who camouflage in religiosity but their hearts are terribly far away from god and there are many people i know a a a a, 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 a woman who um, for years had a big challenge with these things and they truly believe there are many people today who believe that demons attack them because they make they, they did make up i know that we have read all kinds of occultic books that they use human hair level six 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 level seven 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 level twelve 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 and they have used uh, um, um, uh, human blood to make this and all of that and many of you even cream you don't use because you say in the name of jesus blah 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 story 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 this and that and that why are we religious i have a question to why do we allow religion to stop us from walking in the fullness of what God has called us? Whether you are wearing trousers or no trousers, if you come and you are indecent, it's our job to send you away and say, go and dress well. Hallelujah. The true Christian character should be that of modesty and decency. That whatever the Bible says, that let your eating meat not cause your brother to sin. If I'm going to deeper life today, I'll be stupid to dress like this and go to deeper life. Because, for instance, the, based on the, the doctrines and the tenets, they already believe. Why don't you quietly confirm for the sake of the gospel? Are you listening to me? It's called spiritual maturity. If I'm going to talk among a company of elderly people, 50s and above, why should I? I there's, there's nothing wrong. It's not the issue of good or bad. It's about being in the best position to communicate the life of Christ. Are you getting blessed tonight? And so, dissolve that grouping thing. We are the committee of ladies that wear trousers. We are the committee of ladies who don't wear trousers. We are the holy ones. We are the not sanctified ones. And begin to address the issue of decency or indecency. You have clothes that are not decent. Pack them and take them away. like a true ambassador one who represents the government of heaven but for you to preach and say wearing trousers or no wearing trousers is going to be the solution is a vain pursuit there are six billion people on earth with different kinds of mindset and can i tell you something we are all going to heaven so i wonder how we'll behave in heaven when we're already hating one another because of this many people if they have their way they'll tell jesus christ create another supper there is one big table and all of us are going to sit down on that table it's called the supper of the lamb so you better begin to love your brother right now because you may sit close to him at that supper Why do we hate one another? Am I addressing something, please? There are several people, there are several of you sitting down today that you have been stopped. Um, they've stopped you from relating with other people on grounds of certain things. God, God brought roommates and friends that can change and transform your destiny. But because of faulty foundations, there are many people you know, you hear a tape and a message that can bless you. But simply because you have a problem with a few things in that man's church or whatever. But you know this person loved God. Just personal things you don't receive. It. There are many of you that you are suffering from sin. You are suffering from all kinds of habits. And the Holy Spirit just points you to a message that was preached by W.F. Kumui. I say, Kumui, forget I'm a new creation man. I'm a this. And forget about whatever excesses whether they wear earrings or this can you not open your heart and say lord speak to me i desire change more than anything when we get that hungry then we start forgetting there are several people going to church is simply exploring to know those who are obedient to the word or not obedient by the standards of their foundation so the moment we come to church we're already frowning at everybody the person sitting next to you put perfume and you're like oh god this can't be. let me tell you something heaven is not for only you heaven is for all of god's children and you are only one 